Welcome to ZCast. I'm Zia Scarval from ZK Research, and I'm here at Extreme's AI Summit in New York. We're at MLB's headquarters. Big Extreme customer. I'm with Nabil Bukhari, CTO of Extreme. Yeah. Uh, Nabil, it was really a great day. Yeah, it was yeah. great. I mean, like, this is the first time we have kind of gotten, you know, a bunch of our partners and customers together, a little more intimate, 70, 80 yeah. people, and really laid out the vision of where we want to take AI for networking. So, yeah, I'm super excited. I think it went really well. Yeah, yeah. I talked to Carla this morning about yeah. the goal of it, and she said part of it was the new product, but also yeah. uh, to drive a little bit of thought leadership. Do you yeah. think it accomplished that? I think so. Yeah. I mean, like the fact that one of the customers stood on stage and said that, you know, this kind of thoughtful development on AI, I yeah. don't expect that from my networking vendor, but I was so pleasantly surprised. I'm like, that sums it up. So I, I yeah. think it accomplished, you know, it, could, it accomplished its uh, its goal. Yeah. yeah. You know, one of my big takeaways is I yeah. think you, 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 you did a very good job of connecting the dots between AI and the network, yeah. uh, especially on the campus side. I yeah. think... Uh, if you look at a lot of the messaging coming up from the NVIDIA's, the world and yeah. stuff, everything's very data center focused, yeah. Yeah. right? But when the, then, when you, in fact, uh, 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 Paul Doherty, the keynote speaker this morning, yeah. talked a lot about physical AI yeah. and edge AI, and of course, all that's going to be yeah. front end network, not yeah. back end network, yeah. and you, that's really one of your strengths. So yeah, absolutely, and and look, you know, it, it's twofold, right? So one is the as inferencing and the front-end network comes into the enterprise, so we play on that side, and obviously our fabric is the best suited network for mm -hmm. that, the underlay for that. The other part is that as you bring AI into enterprises, you are thinking about devices, people, applications, sensors, and everything. Well, guess what connects them? That's also the yeah. network. So this is what, as you know, as you noticed, like at the end of the panel, I was saying that, hey, networking is not just the connecting fabric for AI, it is fast becoming the context in AI. And I think that is going to be more and more and more true. And in enterprises, there's nobody better suited to accomplish that goal than we are. Yeah, yeah. now, uh, during your section, mm -hmm. you uh, showed a product called Extreme Exchange yeah. uh, to be released sometime in the distant future, yeah. no date given. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep your boss happy on that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, uh, but just talk about what it is and yeah. uh, uh, what you're hoping to do with that. Yeah, um, and, and look, yes, we, we talked about Extreme Exchange and it's, it's imminent, it's not that far away. Yeah. Um, and the idea there is that when we built Platform One, we really started from an AI core. And while Platform One is run off of AI Core, Platform One is very specifically targeted towards network operations, mm -hmm. network administration, security, access security, and stuff. But the AI Core capabilities are much more diverse than that. So that was one thing, and we wanted to expose those capabilities outside of Platform One as well. So Extreme Exchange really is, think of it as a really smart, modern catalog or app store, whatever you want to call it, which really houses all of these AI <coughs> components. So think about multiple different AI agents, different integrations, different MCP servers, and all the tools that it brings, and so on and so forth, from us, from communities, from our partners in one place. So that's the first aspect for it. The second pillar for it is what we talked about, the agent flow. And look, I won't go into the detail of it, but I'll say what I said there. Automation has been around for a long period of time, but the automation has been rule-based. If this, then that. If this, then yes, that. Yeah. We really want to bring it from the world of rules to the world of reasoning. So now your automation can be intelligent and you can add AI agents, you can add AI tools, you can add AI integration, and your automation thinks. And to me, that is the biggest value that AI can deliver to enterprises today. So that was the second pillar, and the last one obviously is micro apps. And you know, we kind of showed the, the venue intelligence, and that was as an example of what is possible when you really start thinking about AI as not just something that does an action for you, but really starts to think where you as a human stop thinking. And, and that's a little bit more futuristic in nature, but, uh, but that's extreme exchange. Yeah, now I'm not surprised you showed venues because yeah. <laughs> you are so big in venues. Yes. Um, one of the really interesting aspects of that demo that I thought was fascinating was the fact that you didn't prompt it with anything, it just collected yeah. a lot of data, yeah. and then it suggested yeah. we need to think about congestion management and how yeah. people move around exactly. without any prompting at all. Exactly. Yeah. And this is really the power of us. Look, look, you can take a piece of data and you can put a chatbot on it and you can call it AI, which a lot of companies do that. But for us, the real the immediate nirvana, I'm not talking too far out, but the immediate magic of it is that given a set of data, we ask AI, tell me something what I'm missing. 
teach me something that I don't already know, right? Yeah. And that is what we showed at the micro app for the data related to venues, especially for MLB here. And to me, this is the promise of AI for enterprises. And uh, look, we'll bring it out to our customers pretty soon. Yeah, yeah well, and that's um, really takes AI to another level. If I think about the, can I call them legacy AI products? Yeah. And what, you know, the, yeah, the ones they that, were like two years ago, <laughs> yeah, and now yeah. they're legacy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, they, they focus yeah. a lot on yeah. being a, uh, a co-pilot, mm -hmm. yeah. right, and helping me understand, yeah. you know, if I got a Wi-Fi problem, I can yeah. ask it why that is, and it'll tell me that I need to put yeah. a new AP here. Yeah. This really is truly that co-worker. Yeah. It's somebody that's watching the network 24 by yeah. 7, it understands the data, it can yeah. do the analytics, and then it yeah. can tell you, hey, yeah. you should take a look at this, exactly. because it's noticing something that's not right. Exactly, and you know, we talked a little bit about Paul, uh, the key speaker, and he's a brilliant guy, brilliant guy, right? One of the things he was talking about, he was sharing his maturity model, and he was talking about like co-pilots are the first maturity, mm -hmm. or, or no, chatbots are the first one, co-pilots the second one, then he talked about agents, and mm -hmm. then he talked about these workflows that yeah. are smart and thinking, and the fifth one was autonomous. I don't think anybody is at the fifth one. But if you really think about it, this is us pushing into that fourth stage of maturity, where these workflows and these micro apps, they are thinking for you and perhaps going beyond what a human can think, and it is doing it without you really prompting it. Because I feel like the whole world is here at prompting. I think for us, where I'm thinking about is, I want to take AI beyond prompting, because when the AI is tied to prompting, it is still tied to how well you prompt. Yes. I want to take it beyond prompting, mm -hmm. so we are not tied down to the prompting powers of a user. Well, that's what I was talking about, becoming a true co-worker, yeah. right? And yeah. so, what are, uh, you obviously showed that as a sample micro app. Yeah. Do you have any other ideas? I know you're going to your customers to try yeah. and get some ideas, but are yeah. there some that you think we, are really we, good low-hanging fruit? We, we have many. I mean, like internally, think about, we, mm -hmm. uh, we have a backlog of like multiple dozens of them that yeah. we, totally experiment on it. I mean, like, some of the other use cases that I can think of, um, and I know would be very useful for our customers, uh, would be planning. And I'm not talking about planning capacity and stuff. Look, you know, we talked a little bit about AI, we talked a little bit about fabrics, uh, micro-segmentation, end-to-end, dynamic, that response to everything else. The biggest problem on that is people have a hard time wrapping their heads around it. So how do you help them plan that, model that, and stuff like that? So you can imagine, obviously, we're an extreme fabric company, yeah. we're going to apply this to fabric. Mm -hmm. You know, I see a lot of use cases on Wi-Fi side on that as well, especially related to, you know, here obviously I'm coming back to the venue, so spectator engagement and stuff. Um, there are so many use cases for it. The key, as I said earlier, is it's not just about having data, it is also about having the expertise, the domain knowledge, then context, which is ontology and knowledge maps and stuff, and then controls, because customers are not going to allow you to do things like that unless you show control and security and everything. Um, so yeah, exciting times. Now, you touched on segmentation, but how do you yeah. see this being used in the context of security? Yeah. Because that clearly is one of the biggest challenges companies have. Absolutely, in yeah. absolutely. Right, so for me, um, security is, is at multiple different layers, right? So it could be all the way from their data plane, which is our segmentation. You can go up and you can talk about security at the access layer. You can talk about security at the user level, use ETNA and stuff like that. You can talk about Yuba, you can talk about XDRs and so on and so forth. I think some of the biggest areas where we can apply is really where the boundary of network security and data security sits. And I think if you can bridge that yep. gap there, then that can make security that much easier. Because there's nothing that can solve the security problem, it's an ongoing thing, but I do, you can expect that we will apply this tech in that space. But if, we can tell, if, if nothing else, if you can tell me the relationship between certain devices and yeah. apps, yeah. Right? the reason why segmentation doesn't work today yeah. isn't the fact that it doesn't work, because it yeah. does, it's just people don't know how to segment. Yeah, yeah, right? exactly. Because it's too complicated, yeah. You know, Zeus, I would tell you is that segmentation in the network especially done dynamically, is one of those amazing tools that people just don't know how to use it. And Because it's too hard. It's too hard. Yeah, yeah. So now imagine with the kind of technology that you saw here, we can probably take it from it's too difficult to where it is so easy to deploy, and I think that will help everybody you know, from a security point of view. Yeah, you know? I, can, I, I can see that. All right, well that wraps up yeah. uh, Exchange. I want to ask you about the fabric which you mentioned. We talked mm -hmm. about this at your investor day, yeah. uh, about 
when you think about the evolution of the campus network yeah. and the amount of infrastructure traffic that's coming mm -hmm. and how mm -hmm. it just changes things, why do you believe the fabric, yeah. your, your layer two fabric, is ideally suited to, yeah. uh, uh, for the AI era? Yeah, you know, and, and this is something that you will hear us talk about quite a bit because, and you have talked, you and I have talked about it yeah. for a while yeah. now. Look, think about it this way. Um, think of, for a moment, as an analogy, think of inferencing as a brand new kind of application that has its own requirements and stuff. Every time you layer on an application on top of network, it has different kind of requirements all the way from bandwidth, SLA, latency, access, security, so on and so forth. So inferencing has very specific kind of requirements on the network. And since more and more inferencing is actually happening outside of the data center, so now you don't have the pristine environment of a data center you just built six months ago. You have this messy enterprise you know, network that has four or five generations of technology, and you know, probably it's not as clean as you would like. And now you need to make sure that inferencing is working well on this messy network. And you know that is where we shine. That is yeah. where enterprise uh, fabric from us is purpose built for. So I believe as there is more and more inferencing on the edge or inside the enterprises, they're going to realize very quickly that the old school networks from a lot of different vendors are just not going to cut it. They don't even have the controls, you know, that are necessary to serve that application, the new application called inferencing. Yeah. yeah. Well, and. You know, you think of the hierarchical networks we have. Yeah. Companies design them largely in the internet era for north-south traffic. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, we've shifted more to east-west, but yeah. really, when it comes to AI, you need both. And, you and, need and, both, yeah. and it's just almost like... And I think in a fabric, there's no concept of east-west, north-south. There is. There's just traffic. Well, that's what yeah. I was yeah. going to talk about. Yeah. Like, uh, the beauty of the fabric is that north-south, east-west, Direction doesn't really yeah. matter, right? North, it's west, south, east. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly. You can go in whichever direction. Yeah. You can change your direction yeah, midway yeah. and stuff. And, and that's really the power of uh, Fabric. And then this dynamic segmentation directly yeah. on the data plane that ties into the access uh, security like UZTNA for applications and data. Now all of that you bring it together and all of a sudden you say like, why would I ever deploy anything other than this combination if I am putting inferencing mm -hmm. in the enterprise side? So you can see that we will we will do a lot of things with that. All yeah. right, uh, so we got uh, Extreme Ones now in production. It's been out for a while. Yeah. You have Extreme Exchange coming. Yeah. Uh, we're moving into 2026. Uh, yeah. What are you looking forward to next year? What should we expect from Extreme? I think Exchange is probably the first yeah. one. It's towards the early half of it. There is a lot more things planned for Platform One itself. Yeah, we talked a little bit about Fabric, so you can expect. I can't give you all yeah. the things, but right. you can expect some big things from us. You know, on the Fabric side, and then of course Wi-Fi Seven. You know, Wi-Fi Seven, um, from a portfolio point of view, we are already well on our way for having pretty much everything in our portfolio from a Wi-Fi Seven point of view. But a lot of the capabilities of Wi-Fi 7, they need to be now exposed in a way that customers can use it. So you yeah. can see a lot coming in that space. Uh, and then we will continue to develop our AI core because that's just the intelligence system that drives everything. Yeah, I do think Wi-Fi 7 is the first real game-changing yeah. Wi-Fi we've had in a long time. Yes. It's not just 6 gigahertz, but... No, it's uh, a lot of other things. Yeah. In, things fact, in fact, I think a lot of private 5G uh, uh, took some Wi-Fi at the, at the fringe where yeah. deterministic uh, traffic was needed. I think Wi-Fi 7 is going to take that back. It's just it's easier to use, yeah. it's cheaper, and people like Wi-Fi. You, you yeah. know, I'm very, very involved on the 5G yeah. side as well. Um, you know, I'm on, on the board of some of the public companies on that space. Um, it has its own use cases, and I feel those use cases are more and more and more on the consumer side, and that will continue to grow as well. Um, but I feel that some of the early thoughts of enterprise use cases that people had around 5G, I think Wi-Fi 7 in the upcoming ages does it so well yeah. that, you know, it, it, it just, but the good thing is that they're both amazing technologies and they yeah. both have places in the network and they don't have to compete with each other. Yeah, well, Occam's Razor says when there's multiple solutions to a problem, yeah. the simplest one is generally the right one. Uh, and Wi-Fi certainly has simplicity. And the cheapest one. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Per square foot. All yeah. right, um, anything else you want to add? I, I think, uh, well, first, you, thank you, you always you for being here. You guys had a big year this year. Uh, we had yeah. a big year. You know, we're just coming off of uh, ringing the NASDAQ. Yeah. You know, we had a great investor day. You were part of that. Uh, you know, we had a great quarter. You know, we, uh, you know, we, we beat and we raised. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at our investor day, we kind of reinforced and kind of reiterated and maybe pushed up the yeah. expectations for this year. 
Uh, so overall, I think we're coming, oh, this is turning out to be a really good year from a calendar point of view, and we're midway through our fiscal, and we feel really good. Yeah, well, you got the product in a good place, and now yeah. it comes down to execution. Yeah, look, in the end, all of the technology and everything, we, it needs to translate into real value for the customer, and then obviously the scoreboard as a public company, we all know what that is. All right, well, yeah. until we meet again, uh, always appreciate the time, Nabil. Absolutely, thank you so much, uh, it's good to yeah. see you. Yeah. So on behalf of Nabil Bukhari, CTO of Extreme Networks, I'm Zia Scaravalli from ZK Research Team, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on my next episode of Zcast.